Right, so welcome back to part 2, and in this part of the tutorial we'll be talking about the next kind of loop, which is the for loop. So this is the result of um, our previous video. So we have a while loop where we're incrementing an integer um, to a certain point until we stop the loop. Now because this is such a common situation, um, a special loop has been made to uh, make this a little bit shorter, a little bit easier, and it's called the for loop and it works almost the same except the following, so you say for and what it does is it defines uh, the variable in the for loop for you so you don't have to define it up here anymore so that's one thing that makes it easier and you don't check for a boolean value anymore what you do is you just say i is equal to one and then comma four which is where it wants to go to, and actually it includes the last number on the uh, that you type. So if you say one comma four, it would also uh, run the loop the fourth time. So it's not smaller than four, but smaller than or equal to four. So if you want it to run three times, like we were doing just now, you have to put one till three here. Um, zero till two uh, is also fine. It's actually uh, more common in other programming languages to start with zero and then go up to a certain number um, however due to um, some other things in Lua that will come to next episode um, it's better to use a one in Lua but we'll get that will become more clear next episode um, so we have i is equal to one until three and this uh, symbol here is a comma and then do and then you do whatever you want to do in your loop um, and also what this function does, it increments the i for you, so we no longer have to go i is equal to i plus 1 here, we can just write our code and it will do the rest for us. So it works pretty much like the while loop now, um, so it goes 4, creates a new number i, and it puts 1 in i, and it um, goes through the loop, and goes back up again, it increments i after it finished the, the, the loop, so i is now 2 does it again, increments it, i again, goes, i is now 3, and does it one more time, and then it stops. Right, so we'll see if this works. And there we go, excellent. So that is the simple functionality of a for loop. Now let's say, for example, you wanted to print something that looks like this. It's a asterisk, two whoops, two asterisks, and three asterisks, and then four. Um, if you want to try this yourself, I can make this like kind of a challenge or assignment. You could pause the video now and try it for yourself. Um, if not, I will continue and explain it now. Um, so here it comes. Because what you would think you could do here is you could, you know, you can print asterisks. But what if you want to make the second time you print it uh, two asterisks and then three and then four for example. Um, you wouldn't be able to do that easily with a loop, with a single loop. So what you need is two loops. So what we're going to do is, because we want to print it four times I believe, because this is the pattern we had. I'm confusing myself now. I'll leave the pattern here and I'll delete the pattern when I'm done. Whoops. One, two, three. Alright, so we need to print four lines, and the asterisk has to become one larger every time we do that. So the first loop, let's say we're going to print four lines in the first loop, shall we? So one until four, this is going to be our four lines. And then we're going to be printing... I'm just going to call the asterisks A and a is equal to absolutely nothing when we start. Now, let's see here. So what can we do? We need another loop, so we need to be printing a certain number of asterisks, which is first one, then two, then three, and so on. Um, so what we can do is maybe try this. For j is equal to... So we'll start at one, because we want to print one asterisk the first time. Um, but the number of asterisks we want to print um, is the number of loops we've had. So 
what you can use for that is this letter or this variable i here which actually is recording how many loops you've had so this i we can use that in our second for loop right here so what this means is that this for loop will run or the second for loop will run a different number of times every time it starts the for loop so for the four times it increments i this for the second for loop will run longer and longer and longer because it will run until i which the first time is one so it will only do the loop once then it's two and three and so forth um, now the only thing we need to figure out now is how we're going to make this asterisk longer um, and here's something I didn't explain in the first video about variables or the second video I guess that was um, is you can stick uh, letters or words together, I just didn't think I'd explain this, maybe I did, can't remember um, so what you can do is say a is equal to a plus See, normally with numbers, when you add them, you do plus. What if you want to put letters next to each other? So we already have a word and we want to add something to it. What you use in Lua is dot dot. There you go. And then you can put an asterisk. And that's that. And then once we're done, we print A at the end. And then it starts a new loop. So, see here, we've made A. It's just an empty string. There's just, yeah, so it's a string with nothing in it. Um, and then what you can do is you can take A and you can just stick an asterisk behind it like this. So you take whatever A is, A might be a bunch of letters, might be nothing, and you just stick an asterisk behind it. So as you can imagine, the first time you do this, it's going to give you one asterisk. And the second time you do this, I is going to be two. So it will stick two asterisks behind A, and it will print two asterisks at the end of the first loop. Let's just try this. And see if I actually did this correctly because I'm a little bit scared that I'm going to have messed something up. No, line 12. Why? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Oh yeah, that's something I forgot to do. Delete all the rubbish down here. Makes perfect sense. There we go, it wouldn't be the code. So we go, we're printing um, one asterisk and two and then three and then four thanks to double for loop where you're using the variable from the first for loop i in the second for loop so the main point of um, this example is to show you that this variable i here it still exists in this second for loop which is inside the first for loop and you can still use it um, and that can come in very handy sometimes so just so that you uh, you realize that and can use that when necessary. Um, I guess about things that are indented in, so a for loop in a for loop, for example, um, the first end will end the last for loop or if statement or while statement that was defined. So this first end here will end this loop, and the second end will end the first loop. And the way you normally indent things, I'm probably going to do a separate tutorial on sort of style and all that, but um, after a for loop or an if statement um, or a while loop, you indent your code by one indent, and I'm using two space for that, but you can make it as long as you like. Um, and you do that every time you write an if statement or something. Um, and that just helps it um, keep things clear what is part of what for loop. See, if you just um, remove all the indents, this is going to take a while. No, oh, I can't use delete. That's sad. I mean, move this one. It's it becomes a lot less easy to see what on earth is going on all of a sudden. So that's why it's so important to indent things. It makes the code much more clear, much easier to understand. Right. So anyway, that's for loops and while loops. Um, and next video will be about lists and lists are the reason <laughs> that this i here it starts at one uh, rather than zero which is more standard in programming languages but we'll get to that next time see you then and bye